Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WB7W. And today I have Mr. Stephen Hutchings here with me of the Spout Springs Repeater Association VE Testing uh, Group. And uh, so I, am, I have the privilege of being on Stephen's uh, team and have got to do some exam sessions with him. And it, I've got to say it's a lot of fun. So Stephen, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Bob. Stephen was recently featured on Ham Nation with uh, Gordon West and Josh Nas, and he was able to give a good rundown on the uh, testing group. And if you want to see that vi video, you can uh, click on the link above um, or in the description below. So uh, tell me, how did you get started with the online testing? Well, with remote testing, we noticed that there were very few in-person opportunities for a person who wanted to get their initial amateur radio license or upgrade the one they already have, that there were very few in-person test sessions available in our local area. So we explored the remote testing provisions so that more test sessions could be made available. So um, how many test sessions do you do a week, Stephen? Well, right now, uh, we host five test sessions every week, two on Saturdays, two on Sundays, and one in the middle of the week on Wednesdays. However, I participate in several more test sessions as a volunteer examiner for other teams nationwide. Okay. And on average, how many uh, applicants do you have for each test session? On average, we'll get anywhere from a single applicant up to eight or nine, sometimes ten. As more teams are being developed and created across the country, the pool of applicants are being spread out a little more thinly, so our numbers have decreased slightly, but that certainly is not indicative of how many people are coming into the hobby. Okay, and on, on average, how many uh, VEs do you have for each test session? I've noticed in a lot of cases we have more VEs than we do actual applicants. Oh, you're absolutely right, and that's kind of the joy of it. Many of the volunteer examiners will join a test session, even though we have several volunteer examiners. Maybe they're wanting to get out of the yard work, <laughs> painting the house, <laughs> raking the leaves, what have you. But uh, the sessions are a lot of fun. On average, we'll gather anywhere from 15 to 34 volunteer examiners for a given test session. So with now being able to do the testing online, explain to me how that works. Well, an applicant uh, registers for an exam session. Once they feel prepared to pass their given element that they're going to challenge, they'll register for a remote test session. We direct people to HamStudy, hamstudy.org, where you can find a convenient test session all over the country uh, that will be conducive to your busy lifestyle. Uh, find a session that's available for you, register for that session, and then follow the instructions from your contact volunteer examiner, like myself, on how that session will be executed. So once the applicant registers for an exam session, we bring them into a Zoom meeting right on the internet from the comfort of your very own home. In fact, we encourage you to kick your shoes and socks off and stay a while. It's a quite a relaxed atmosphere. And what better place to challenge a ham radio exam than in the comfort of your own home without the stress of mixed company and a different environment. Uh, we simply load an exam onto your screen as the applicant to administer that exam element for you. Simple and clear instructions are then given. You then challenge that exam by clicking on A, B, C, or D on your computer screen as your volunteer examiner team witnesses you're taking the exam. Once it's complete, the exam is instantly graded and results are immediately displayed on the applicant's screen indicating whether you've passed your exam or whether you might have a little bit more study to prepare. Okay, so I, I've noted, you know, so we, we observe the, um, the applicant using Zoom. So, and, and I've noticed that, you know, at the end of it, we, we tell them that they're gonna have their license in just a couple of days. I mean, it's been a number of years since I took my last ham exam, 2002, when I took my extra. But you would wait weeks to get your either your license or to get your upgrade in the in the you know the online so you could see it and actually utilize it. So, but now they get it. How quick? Well, we've had applicants who have received their upgrades within minutes. However, a brand new applicant will typically take a day for the FCC to receive their documentation 
for the new applicant to pay their $35 application fee to the FCC, and then typically the following business day, they receive their brand new call sign by email. So online testing is certainly more convenient for the applicants, but it's also more convenient for the VEs. But what are some of the other benefits to being able to do this online as opposed to in person? So over the last two years and nearly 900 applicants that our team has brought into the hobby and have assisted in their upgrades, not a single vehicle was started, not a single ounce of fuel or miles driven to go to a in-person test session. Additionally, the electronic paperwork is all completed right there on the computer and submitted through drop boxes and secure channels to the FCC to get all of, of the documentation processed. So no trips to the post office, no stamps to lick, and no rushes to gather signatures for the volunteer examiners as the session is typically complete within a few moments of the last applicant leaving and the session uploaded to the FCC. So the speed and the efficiency is really what's key. Uh, it's in vast contrast to the way it used to be done where a contact volunteer examiner would sometimes review those documents for several days before they made their weekly trip to the post office to submit their session to their volunteer examining coordinator, their VEC, who then would have to sit there and transcribe the paper documents into a computer electronic form to then be submitted. So the speed efficiency is night and day compared to what it used to be. We also subscribe to the thinking that if a person can obtain their college degree online, why not be able to test online for an amateur radio license as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and the pandemic really brought this to light because you couldn't get together in person, they just wouldn't let you. So this really kept the, the ham radio uh, community vibrant and allowed us to continue to get uh, new hams into the pipeline. So that's outstanding. Obviously, uh, you know, online isn't the only way. We do still do uh, in-person sessions. So explain how that works, because even that has changed a lot in what we do with new technologies. In fact, it has. I test under the auspices of W5YI, and we use exam tools, an online toolkit for administering exam sessions. Now, remote exams are one thing. However, like you mentioned, an in-person exam even if it's on pen and paper with the old fashioned bubble sheets that you might remember filling in the bubbles from All years well. ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, those sessions can still be accommodated quite easily with the caveat that that bubble sheet is then graded using a smartphone that most of us have in our pocket. Grading that exam is now accomplished by pointing your smartphone at that paper exam and it's instantly graded. Again, expediting the speed, the efficiency, and the accuracy of that exam being graded. So the possibility of errors have also been greatly diminished as well. Absolutely. Another component of in-person testing is tablet testing. We also utilize touchscreen tablets that will have an exam loaded onto them. From an atmosphere of a coffee shop, a library, or even here in the city park, yep we're going to be able to administer an exam by handing an applicant or dozens of applicants a simple touchscreen tablet that our test team provides to them. They simply log in on their tablet, take their exam while we simply observe them, and when the session's complete and they're ready to sign their documents, using the touchscreen, they simply sign just like uh, you do at the, the store on a credit card reader, if you will. So, and in fact, actually, the testing environment that they do in person is exactly the same testing environment that we do online. It's just it's done on the tablet in front of people instead of done in front at their house in front of their computer. That's correct. Yeah. And the atmosphere, again, is very relaxed. Uh, the in-person sessions are often uh, even more relaxed because there's not the component of Zoom and you're having to focus a, cam a camera. Uh, being in person like what we're familiar with is much more convenient. Uh, however, you do have to start a car and head off somewhere to take that examination. Well, and so since we get applicants from all over the country, it'd be a long drive for some of them to get here to Eastern Washington it State. It would, <laughs> absolutely, yes. We don't encourage you to drive to Washington State. Well, it's a beautiful state, but hey. 
That's true. We'll take you if you want to come. You know, come on down. So obviously, to be able to pass a, an amateur radio exam, it takes a fair amount of study. So what, in your opinion, is the best way for a new applicant to prepare themselves to be able to take the ham exam? Very good question, Bob. There are obviously a lot of resources out there on the internet, which is where many of us get our education in a lot of matters. There are YouTube videos. We highly recommend the study materials from Gordon West with haminstructor.com. Uh, regardless of the materials that you use to prepare for your exam session, um, the question pool that you're going to be tested on is always the same. So regardless of which volunteer examining coordinator you choose to test with, the question presentation will always be identical. So whether it be YouTube videos uh, from Ham Nation and the, the huge vast array of educational materials in printed form or on YouTube or certain PowerPoint presentations, gather all the information you can to challenge that exam. Make sure you're studying for the current question pool though and then come in and challenge that exam. So uh, you mentioned Gordon West, and I mean, when I first took my first exam, I used his study books. You know, back when you had to use books, there was no internet at the time, or, or the internet was very new in its infancy. But, uh, but Gordon is actually a member of our VE team. Well, that's correct. Um, I'm proud to be the, uh, the lead for my particular team, in which Gordon serves on. Years ago, when I studied for my own amateur radio license, I studied Gordon's books as well as many as, you, as many of you have as well, the Now You're Talking series. I got to know Gordon by reading his material. And now that I'm in the hobby, and Gordon's still in the hobby and a huge advocate and ambassador for amateur radio, I now have the privilege to welcome him onto the team as well to administer exams. Yeah the same way I and Bob do as well. So what a treat to have Gordon West on the screen and actually signing examination documents for our applicants. That was probably my biggest thrill with it being on the team was actually, you know, even though not in person, but virtually, but to actually meet Gordon West and what a nice guy he is. And, Absolutely. And really a huge proponent for our hobby. So that's great. Now, the thing you'd mentioned earlier on, you know, as far as study materials, you mentioned hamstudy.org and, and that's a great way to study as well because for one, it's free, and uh, and two is it's very it's almost identical to the environment when you go to take your test. So if you're comfortable with ham study, you're comfortable with taking your exam because it's basically the same. Correct? That's correct. Ham study also provides all of the study materials, again free of charge, at hamstudy.org. You're able to study for the technician, the general, or the amateur extra. There's certain components of each one of those study guides and we highly recommend you read the questions, then you study those questions, and then begin taking practice exams. And like you mentioned, the actual test environment is identical. So we encourage folks to take their test with us, consider it a practice exam, like you've already taken on hamstudy.org. It's a practice exam that's simply observed by the folks who can sign off on it obtaining your amateur radio privileges. Outstanding. So Stephen, there may be some viewers on here that may actually want to become VEs on the team. So how do they go about becoming a VE on the WM7X team? Another very good question. Um, first, a volunteer examiner has to become accredited by one of the 14 different volunteer examiner coordinators across the country. A volunteer examiner coordinator, or VEC, is the agency that accredits ham radio operators to administer exams under their rules and the FCC's rules. So I actually had come from the ARRL as a volunteer examiner. Yeah, me as well. That's how I got my start back in like 2002. That's when I did my first Ab exams was, yeah, the old fashioned way. Yep. The old fashioned way, absolutely. I'm now dual accredited. So I have a ARRL badge. I also have a W5YI badge on my sleeve, if you will. And so I'm a volunteer examiner that's now able to serve multiple VECs. And so a person who wants to become a volunteer examiner, uh, reach out to W5YI to seek your accreditation as a volunteer examiner. 
Once you receive your credentials, you're then able to participate in test sessions, whether they be in person on paper or remotely on Zoom sessions, uh, the much more preferred method. All right, Stephen, so with, with the number of test sessions we do and the number of applicants we do, how do we rank amongst the other you know, uh, VE uh, testing groups, particularly those on W5YI? Well, using exam tools, which W5YI uses exclusively now, uh, W5YI leads all of the other VECs in the administration of amateur radio exams. I happen to serve on a team that is one of the largest in the country and also the busiest. Uh, the motivation there is to make sure that everybody, your viewers included, have a session convenient for them and their busy schedules as well. Well, thanks for coming to join me today, Stephen. I really appreciate it. I know the viewers will as well. And uh, I look forward to being a member of your team for the years to come. So thank you. What a treat to have you on the team as well. Uh, thanks, looking forward to many more exam sessions Absolutely. in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to know when my next video comes up, consider subscribing and also hit that bell button so you get notified. Until next time. 73s.